last week we on the show we discussed that the just Justin Jefferson deal was imminent and we talked about you know like would there be a bubble at some point would these teams start start pushing back against the the rate at which the receivers are being played uh the Vikings were not pushing back because I brought up on the show there's no way that you could tell me the Vikings were going to be the team that traded away Randy Moss Stefan Diggs and Justin Jefferson all three guys I think are going to end up uh you know one of them's already in the Hall of Fame these other two are in my estimation going to end up in the Hall of Fame so he gets the 35 million dollar deal getting paid like uh like a mid-level quarterback contract here like I think I saw somewhere like he's making more money than like Baker Mayfield and like that level of contract like where do you guys how do you think this contract will age you think it's a good contract a smart thing like basically whatever you want to say about the Justin Jefferson deal let's hear it right now we'll start with Joe on this one well 25 year old wide receiver you got Sam Darnold and a young Ricky wide receiver quarterback we all know what Justin Jefferson can bring to the game, and I, there's no doubt about it. What he's going to do for your ticket sales and everything like that, but holy shit, $35 million is what we're paying wide receivers now? Like this is – and we, we, I think we talked about it last week. Like I told you the wide receiver market, every year we're looking at the draft now, we're going, oh, this draft's loaded with wide receivers. This draft's loaded with wide receivers. I understand what Minnesota's doing. But what's the what's the closest to him? Another what's the closest to him? I think twenty thirty million dollars. So you paid him five million dollars more. You you reset the wide receiver market right here. I with thought it was thirty two. Who's who's at thirty two? Isn't AJ Brown's new deal was like average annual mm-hmm. salary was like thirty two or something like that? Go ahead. This this just showed me that, uh, like we already knew about it, and it's going that way. Offense is the NFL, and if you're not spending money on offense. Uh, yeah, Apex is right on that. But je- I mean, this I I can't I we saw this deal. This number came out, and I was like, holy shit! And and what Apex and that's the same thing I thought. The, everybody thought the same thing when Apex thought. What about Brandon Ayuk? Because it's like that's the main guy out there. But Justin Jefferson, thirty five million dollars. I when the Vikings are relevant again, like when they're good on offense again, or they have a good quarterback, or JJ McCarthy is ready. Uh, I think Justin Jefferson's on his way out. The, yeah, that's probably not a bad take, Mike. We couldn't. We, yeah, we couldn't end up in that position. You know, when teams are facing the wall, even Justin Jefferson, the great Justin Jefferson, the quarterback will probably get taken over him because he's still dependent on the quarterback. He's still dependent on the O line to produce at a level that makes this contract worth its value. It's interesting to see how teams' strategies are changing with the way the positional cap is being moved around. Like, clearly the Vikings, they let go of the Supermax quarterback to make sure they can keep the Supermax wide receiver in town. We see other teams that just load up their entire defense. We see other teams who load up the offensive line and the running back core. So it's, it's interesting to see how the strategy is going down. I think the team that's, that's managed it the best out of everybody is probably the 49ers, honestly, in, in a weird way. I mean, it's kind of happened by chance, too because the quarter, their quarterback situation is what it is because of injuries. But they built the entire team. They spent at the areas, spent big on the areas that they feel are the most important parts of their team. And then they filled in players that they think can run the system in other spots. And you could tell that that rushing attack, that offensive line, George Kittle's uh, play action game, all of that is kind of the strength of the 49ers. They just said, we need someone in here that can just run this thing. And the idea was it was going to be Trey Lance on a rookie contract where they could afford all these other guys and bring in Christian McCaffrey still ended up being Brock Purdy instead. I think that they've kind of managed that risk reward the best. Like we're going to pay our edge rushers. We're going to make sure the D line is super good. We're going to pay the left tackle. We're going to pay the running back, but we're going to discount a quarterback where we can save $50 million per year to spend on other positions. The Vikings are kind of in a spot here where they're doing something similar. They're saying, Hey, Justin Jefferson's our most important player. We're going to pay for that player, even if it is this record-breaking price. We're going to fill in at quarterback with a rookie quarterback and just hope that the entire offensive weapons can carry him, similar to the way that the 49ers weapons have carried 49ers quarterbacks over the last couple of years. The big problem is, even with it improving probably this year, I don't know about the Vikings' defense reaching that competitive of a level in the next you know two years. 
So I think that this is the the Vikings are in the perfect spot to be paying thirty five million dollars a year, right? Like I, it's you. I don't. I think it's really tough the situation the Dolphins are in, where they just paid Jalen Waddle. There's reports that Tyreek Hill, you know, not even reports. I think it was like his agent just came out and said, you know how we feel about the situation or whatever. So he's going to want some more money. And then you also have to be trying to figure things out with Tua, where Tua is at the podium going. I can't find the right descriptive word. There's not a word to that encompasses my exact feeling right now. Like that's a basically that was the premise of the interaction with him and the reporters at that little scrum session that they had at OTAs the other day. And I was like, holy shit, this situation is extremely uncomfortable. Please pay this man because the Dolphins could have a really fun thing going on. Like, I don't know if it's like Super Bowl winning, but like it's a good team and Tua should be part of it. But as far as like somebody brings up Brandon Ayuk or Mike brings up the 49ers, I there was I should have pulled the quote, at least gotten it like so I could have read it. The the basis of it was the I think it was the offensive line coach was being asked, you know, what do you think of the sort of trench guys versus the playmakers? And even the offensive line coach, I believe it was, said something to the effect of if you ask me, get the get the guys, get the playmakers. I'll develop the guys in the offensive line room. Like you can find guys in the second, third, fourth, fifth rounds that can be starters because you're saying they're investing money in the right spot. And I do think like defensive line, that's a heavy investment for them every year. The offensive line, they kind of are like, Hey, we can just get average guys, guys that, you know, the, the draft guys aren't necessarily big on and we can make them work in our system because Kyle Shanahan is like, I'm such a genius. We'll figure it out. But what has been the downfall of the 49ers is like when they get late in these games and people bring certain, you know, pressure packages and whatever else, it tends to affect the fact that they don't necessarily have the best offensive line or the best play call to pick up different things. They don't have those pieces that get them over that final hump. Like the Super Bowl could have went the 49ers way last year. Easy, like several spots in that moment. But now once they, I mean, there's what? 12 months, 16 months away from having to pay Brock Purdy. And they have to, unless they again, stumble across somebody else and they just let Purdy go trade him or sign somewhere else and take the, the compensatory pick. Like I don't necessarily think that they're in a position where they can sign Ayuk and they can keep Debo. And I think that's why they drafted a guy like Ricky Pearsall because they are trying to figure out like, Hey, if we're going to keep this going, we can't be paying wide receivers. And so, you know, Brandon Ayuk, do you, you like the Steelers? Do you like, do you, you know, like Chargers? Are they willing to come with a contract? Like, personally, I don't want the Chargers to spend on that position. I don't think that once you pay your quarterback money, it is then his job to work with sort of guys that are middle tier and for them to be drafting and developing wide receivers. That's how it should be. You shouldn't be having to pay 35 plus million dollars and it's not like the wide receiver market this is all non-qb market like justin jefferson passes boson it's like it's not just the wide receivers it's like now some of these wide receivers are being the second paid second highest paid player on a team if they don't have a franchise quarterback making 40 million dollars a year and to me that's it's too much money to put in a situation where like what if JJ McCarthy and Sam Darnold can't function in the offense? Now all of a sudden you're paying $35 million and it's getting you nine win seasons every year. Like, I don't know. But See, it's, it's the best spot. The other thing I have an issue with, Tony, is when I saw the $35 million, not Justin Jefferson could arguably be the best wide receiver in the NFL right now, right? He's probably is the best. But what sucks about the NFL is now every wide receiver, no matter what their talent is, wants more than $35 million. Like the NFL will pay an average wide receiver more than $35 million now. That's what sucks about this deal is it reset the wide receiver deal where the next wide receiver is up, right? He's going to want that much money. And the NFL, and, and that's how the NFL has been rocking. You don't even have to be the best player in your position to get best player money. And then just, I, I just, I'm, I laugh at it. Yeah. Like, wow. The next wide receiver is up like right now too. Jamar Chase and CeeDee Lamb both need contracts. So they're up like right this this second. 
And so I, I tend to disagree with that a little bit because we've seen sort of next guys up that aren't on that level where it's like, I think there were some defensive linemen who were ready to get contracts and they didn't get Nick Bosa money. Like Chris Jones held out because he wanted Aaron Donald money. And like, that was a whole big contentious thing. There were a lot of defensive tackles that were next guys up and they weren't trying to give them $30 million a year. So I think that like, Justin Jefferson has entered a territory where it's different because the Cowboys are in a situation with CD lamb where it's like, if you're not going to pay Dak and you don't have the future of the position there on a team friendly deal, you could say they think Trey Lance is the next guy, but pretty soon if he is that guy, you're going to be having to pay him the same amount of money you would have had to pay Dak who we already know can be an MVP caliber quarterback in the NFL. So it's like, it's the, that's why the Minnesota position to me is perfect because Sam Darnold plays one year. If he plays outstanding and the Vikings win 10 or 11 games this year, Sam Darnold likely signs a contract somewhere else that nets the Vikings a 2026 third round compensatory pick or something like that. Right. And then you just hand the reins over to JJ McCarthy because you've seen enough where in year two, he's going to be able to step right in and keep that team at an 11 to 11 plus win pace. The Cowboys aren't in that situation. They didn't draft the future of their team. And the guy that could potentially be the future, the, the one they use a fourth round pick on to get Trey Lance will be in, you know, fifth year next year, if that's the case. So it's like, they're not in that position to say, Oh, next year, we're going to just trade everything we got to go up and get Shadur Sanders. Like that would have to be the, the situation, maybe not sure, but whoever QB one is going into next year's draft. It's like, I don't think the Cowboys are in a great spot. And what if they do pay, you know, CD lambs agents go, Hey, we might not be quite Justin Jefferson level, but we want 34 and a half million dollars. We want to be paid above Nick Bosa, just below Justin Jefferson. And then chase goes, Hey, I'm just as good. I was better than him in college. I'm better than him in the pros. I want 36 and a half. Well, T Higgins, it's been nice having you here in Cincinnati. We'll see you later.